grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved. It is me again. Thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I am Ambassador Chantrell Davis. Today is December the 28th of 2017. It is 11.35 a.m. Central Time. Come together with me on one accord. Bring your mind in as I lift up the Lord and we lift up prayer before our Father. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again that I'm alive for such a time as this. Thank you, Father God, for the words that you have ordained for me to deliver this day, Father God. Thank you for every message, Father God, every word, every word of revelation, Father God, every word that proceeded out of your mouth, Father God. For I thank you that you have said, Father God, that we do not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of your mouth, Father God, which means you are still speaking, Father God. Today we incline our ears to wisdom and apply our hearts to the understanding, Father God, that we may know what the Spirit is saying to the church and we may know what you are speaking for this season, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for divine revelation, Father God, hindsight, insight, and foresight, Father God. This day, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as the speaker, I yield to the speaker of this house. That is the Holy Spirit. I trust the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the indwelling. I thank you that you have brought him into me, Father God, to get word through me, Father God, of revelation, Father God. Not my will, but your will be done, Father God. Be lifted up, Father God, with my life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I yield to your will and your purpose and your plan this day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, decree and declare that this will will go forth unhindered and unchecked by the outside forth, Father God. I decree cultivated ears over the ears of the listeners, Father God, over their hearts, over their minds, Father God. I decree penetration of the word this day, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood. I decree and prophesy fruit, Father God, fruit that shall come forth and fruit that shall remain according to thy word, Father God. I trust your word, Father God, and I trust the provisions of your word in my life, Father God. I thank you that your word is alive, it is energizing, it is effective, Father God, and it is always enough, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I come against every demonic principality, Father God, every high uh, evil principality and every high thing that sets itself against your true knowledge, every high thing Father God, that sets itself against this ministry, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I decree null and void any attacks, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that the mischief they have formed, they will not, per, per, uh, the mischief they have planned, they will not be able to perform, Father God. I decree and declare, Father God, failure, Father God, returning to the very bosom, Father God, the mischief of their own heart, Father God, that they suffer the own fruit of their own mouth, the fruit of their own ways, the fruit of their own intents, Father God. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you have blessed me for this day. I'm alive for such a time as this, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that this word will go forth unhindered, Father God, it will accomplish the thing where unto it is sent. Father God, I thank you that you look after your word. You hasten to perform it, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that it will not return unto you void, Father God. I plead the holy blood of Jesus over my heart, my mind, my will, and my emotion, Father God, and I yield to your will, Father God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Father God. I thank you, Father God, I come against every witch and warlock, Father God, every ball and pot, every evil altar, Father God, and I command holy fire down, your all-consuming fire to consume them, Father God. I suffer all witches and warlocks not to live, Father God, not to progress, Father God, not to be relevant, Father God, not to be productive. I decree and declare right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, for I thank you, you are with me or for me, Father God, and for me. I thank you, Father God, that you said those who gather against me, you will cause to fall for my sake, Father God. You contend with those who contend with me, Father God. You fight against those who fight against me. Father God, I will cry loud and spread not, Father God, according to thy word, for the Lord my God is with me, Father God. I trust my life to your provision. I commit all that I am, the ministry, and all that I ever will be to you, and I trust you are able to keep it against the day, Father God. Bless the hearers, Father God. I plead the Lord blood of Jesus over their ears and their hearts, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, I cover them. I decree and declare that we be no backlash, Father God, no projection, Father God, in the name of Jesus, and no attachment, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that we are shielded by the blood. We are hid in your secret place, and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are our refuge, fortress, and strength. We thank you, Father God. We trust you and we bless you with our hearts this day, Father God, in spirit and in truth, Father. I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus, Father God, and by the spirit of God, I say amen. Okay, this message um, uh, may not be long. Uh, it depends on how the uh, Holy Spirit starts to elaborate, but I'm going to stick uh, uh, to what I have uh, before me. And as the Holy Spirit expounds, he will expound because this is a serious thing. This is why many people are not seeing productivity or results, even though they're pressing forth in the Lord, because there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. You don't just get to move forth and leave things unattended. And many people leave things unattended. They, they surrender to God. They don't go back and close doors and deal with things. And that's why not being able to see what's in you and correct it 
and not being able to receive correction is very dangerous because even though you have a spirit, let me start. The name of this uh, message is a breach, a breach in the spirit dabbed with untempered mortar, untempered mortar. Okay. I'm going to start with Proverbs 15 and four. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein, perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Okay. And we're going to deal with that word perverse. I'm going to break that down first. I'll break down breach, breach first. A failure to perform some promise or act or obligation. Okay. A breach. Failure to perform some promised act or obligation. An opening, especially a gap, a dike, in or in a dike or a, forta, a fortification. So you're fortified in Christ. He is the form excuse me, the firm foundation, a personal or social separation. Okay. Get this a separation, personal or social separation. And I get scripture on that. Their sins separate them from me. You choose to keep yourself in darkness. So you separate yourself from the Lord, even though he's promised his presence to the beloved, a uh, act in disregard to laws or rules. And we know that's just the word of God. Them are his rules. Them are his written instructions for our life. It is our food. It is our bread of life. It is our path. It is the light to our feet. It is the engrafted word that is able to save our soul. Now let's dissect perverse. Marked by disposition. To oppose. To contradict. Which also means to deny. So for those of you who like to say that you like to use that scripture that if you deny me before men, I'll also you deny you before my father. It means more than you audibly saying I deny him. You deny him by your actions. If your actions are contrary to how he walks, you have denied him. If your actions are contrary to what the word says we are in him, you have denied him. You don't love your brother, you have denied him. You gossip, you have denied him. You circulate false videos, you have denied him. I want y'all to catch this. Breach in the spirit. Okay? It means to resist the guidance or discipline. The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit not only tells you not to kill, he, don't, he tells you not to steal, he tells you not to gossip, he tells you not to lie, he tells you not to fornicate, he tells you to quit sleeping with that married man, he tells you to quit masturbating, he tells you to quit looking at scandal and empire, all that stuff that perverts the words that he say, the evil communication corrupts good manner, that is a communication. Look up what communication means. It ain't just talking. That TV is communicating. That's why they call it program. That's a contradiction. You have denied him breach in the spirit. Y'all got to catch this. This is what's going to keep many from making it to the end and keep many from ascending into the things of God. To be marked by immorality. You are marked by immorality. Well, I, I'm going to stay on course, but I can break that word marked down, but I ain't got it. This is something that just came up now. Uh, deviating from what is considered right or proper. You have deviated. What does deviated mean? You've gotten off the straight and narrow path. The path is narrow. Few who find it. You have to stay on the straight path. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Breach in the spirit. And I'm going to start naming it with some of these breaches. Other ways to be breaches. Being contradictory to the Lord is a breach. Because perverse means twisted. Contrary to. That's perverse. Now we're going to break down deny. Because I'm just laying this foundation. To refuse to let have. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Surrender. You let him have you. Deny oneself something. Restrain from any indulgence. Deny your flesh. You want to go to, I'm going to get on y'all Christians to go to these worldly concerts, jazz clubs, Tyrese, Beyonce, all y'all to say y'all saved and y'all up in them concerts. Breach. You in contradiction. Therefore, you have denied him. And I'm going to tell you another revelation the Lord said, out of timing, out of order, out of alignment in the darkness. I'm going to touch on that another time. To refuse to grant petition or request. You're not obeying the voice of the Lord. And if you do the research in the Bible, that's all it ever was. They refused to hearken unto my voice. They refused to hearken unto my voice. They refused to hearken unto my voice. And then he went to the next generation. You are like your fathers. You do always resist the Holy Spirit. Contradiction. Breach in the spirit. You can't ever be filled up to overflow because there's a leak. 
refuse to accept or believe. That means all the words. It's not just I believe Jesus, but you don't live like Jesus. I believe Jesus, I believe the Bible, but I don't believe I ain't supposed to be looking at this. I'm not supposed to be talking about people. I'm not supposed to be gossiping. I'm not supposed to be listening to gossip. I'm not supposed to be circulating video that I don't know is true, that I didn't witness. I'm not supposed to be jealous and competing. I'm not supposed to be having hate in my heart. Contradiction. Breach. Fornicating. Masturbation. Foul videos. Foul entertainment. Contradiction, breaching the spirit, perverseness, denial. You have denied him. And we're going to get to the untempered mortar. We ain't got there yet. Definition, uh, oh yeah, let me finish deny. To refuse to accept or believe, to refuse to recognize or acknowledge. You don't acknowledge him in nothing you do. Or you wouldn't be doing half the stuff you're doing. Because the Holy Spirit will say, you know, no. Most people don't inquire because they know already the answer. They know they're not supposed to be doing it. That's why there's conviction. There's not going to be many subscribers. I ain't going to have many subscribers because the Lord has called me to reprove and rebuke as well as encourage. Many people want to hear the dreams and visions, but they don't want that teaching. And he said every word that's given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is for reproof, that you may be sound and you grow up whole and lack nothing. Instead, you want your ears tickled. Whoa, because I'm telling you, let me stay on course. It's, 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 it's. There's marks going for it. You're going to remain in the state you're in because you, were, you wouldn't have none of his reproof and you refused all of his acknowledge. You refused all of the teaching and reproof that he's given through his teachers. Okay? To contradict. To be in contradiction with, to deny the truth of. That means all of it. Not just that the word is true. If the word says you don't do these things no more, you can't choose to believe what parts of the Bible you choose because it, it, it interferes with what you want to do. To contradict, to prove negative or show to be false. By your behavior, when you're doing contrary to the word of God and contrary to where he walked, meaning you're rude to people, we're going to hit all of it. you rude to people. You don't smile. You want to say you pray in the spirit, but you, you, you speak in the spirit, but you only speak to your brothers and sisters. You click up. If they don't agree with what you say they should agree with, they're pushed out. Contradiction. Because the Bible says how good it is for us to dwell in unity. Because all we going in together, we ain't going in at all. We strive to enter the trade. I mean the body. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, which means you see what the word is saying, but you still choose to go to those concerts. You still choose to walk around with it hanging out. You still choose to gossip and talk about people and lie. You still choose to shack up and stay with this person you're not married to and have babies. Contradiction, breach in the spirit, denial of Christ, because you you making him look false. That's our old God in the scripture, where he was speaking about the Pharisees, that the name is blasphemed among the heathen, heathens through you. The heathens are talking about him and blaspheming because they see what you're doing. They're like, look at them people in the church. They don't act no better than we act. They standing up there in mini skirts. They standing up there and you can see all their goodies hanging out. They going to the concerts just like we going to. They spin drunk. I saw them over there on the curb drunk. They're blasphemed through you. Breaching the spirit. And we're going to get to the dad with untempered mortar. Oh, oh, oh. The last definition of contradict, to be resistant to. Resistant to the word. Why? You're doing contradiction to what you clearly see the word. People would look and argue with a point because it interferes with something they want to do. They argue because it interferes with what they're not ready to give up. You are loving the things of this world. He said, don't love the things of this world, neither the things, don't love the things of this world, neither the things in it. That don't mean we won't have stuff because he had, the kingdom has need for you. So you have to have. So for those of y'all that say we ain't supposed to have money, we ain't supposed to dress nice. I know y'all ain't kingdom. Y'all are not kingdom or y'all would know better because you're going to be sharp in heaven. I'm telling you, I got testimony. He, my, the shoes he put on my feet were jewels, sapphires, rubies, and emeralds. Still felt like I was barefooted too. Sharp. And the people I saw were sharp. That's a lie. He tells you not to love it. He didn't tell you you weren't going to have it. But when he tells you to use it and give it, that's going to determine whether you love it or not. When he say part with this and you give it up, you have it, but you don't love it. When you can't give it up, you love it. You don't share it and give the people what they have need of. You love it. Let me get on. Contradictory, contradictory speaking, tickling of ears, prophets who are sent, 
who are not sent. I'm going to start with Ezekiel. I'm going to read a few scriptures before I start expounding on what I'm getting with the untempered mortar. Because, e okay, Ezekiel 13, 10 through 12. Because, uh, because, this is what's messing me up. Because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace. And built up a wall, and lo, others dabbed it, others dabbed it, others dabbed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which dabbed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, it shall fall, it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, uh, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and stormy winds shall rend it, shall tear it apart. Lo, when the wall is fallen, it shall not be said unto you. It shall, it shall, uh, Lord, let me stop. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, where is the dobbing that you dabbed this with? Where, where's your, where's your, what you use to hold it together? Where's your dabbing? Where's your mortar? Shouldn't it have kept it together? If it was of me? I'm going to read it in the Amplified. It is definitely because they have seduced my people saying peace. And I'm going to tell you what this means. Okay? Saying peace when there is no peace. And when, uh, and because when they build it flimsy, they build it flimsy. Pay attention to this. A flimsy wall. Behold, these lying prophets and pastors. These lying prophets. And what I tell you, prophecy ain't just foretelling and telling forth. It's those who minister the word of God too. Prophet, prophesying is. Prophets plaster it over with whitewash. Where well, have y'all heard that before? So tell those who plaster it with whitewash that it will fall. A flooding rain. Mm, and that's his word. He gonna flood his word out. That's gonna, oh God, that's revelation. That's that rain. He gonna flood a rain out, which is his true revelation. His true rain of word. The word that proceeded. The proceeding word of God. He's going to rain it down. And it's going to tear up. The untempered martyred lying words. That are going forth to these false prophets. I want y'all to catch this. Flooding rain of judgment. Okay. And y'all. And y'all to look at these uh, scripture. What did I tell you? He said with you. Our mouths. I'm going to execute the judgment. That is written up on the heathen. Okay. It will come, and great hailstones will fall, and violent wind will tear up a part of a part of the wall. Behold, when the wall has fallen, will you not ask, will you not be asked? They're gonna come ask you. He said, when the wall, when what you built up fall down, will they not come ask you? Where's the coating with you? The prophets plastered it. Where's the sure word of prophecy that you gave me? What happened? They're gonna come and ask the prophets. Well, you know what's up? What's up with this word you gave? Why did this word fall to the ground? Why did that word fall to the ground? Why did this not come to pass? Why is my life getting worse? Why are they still dying? Why are they not prospering? Why are they not excelling? Why are they not going forth in the power? Untempered mortar. We're gonna get to a more practical meaning of what untempered mortar means. We're going to get to practical. I'm going to get to the practical meaning of what breaches are, okay? You, I've already given you some examples. You hate your mama. You hate your sister. You hate them in your heart. You have unforgiveness. Breach. You talk about people and you ain't dealt with why. Breach. You have hurt. You have not dealt with why. Breach. You're in competition with brothers, sisters in Christ. Breach. Because I'm telling you, it's people I see. And I even know why they post. Why they offer to help. And I'm going to warn y'all, please pay attention when people are just trying to be helpful. That's not their heart. They're after something else. Breach. They're doing it to be seen. They need to be in. And it's bad reasons. When you're walking in unforgiveness and hatred, breach. You still have old wounds that ain't healed. You have breach. So the Lord cannot fill you up. He's not going to fill you up with the provisions of uh, for the task because it will be leaking out the back end. You will not have enough oil to complete the task because you have a spiritual breach. So therefore, you can't be, he can't pour out on you because you have a breach in your spirit. Hatred, competition, self-hatred, breach. That's why this soul cleansing and uh, all this stuff that has to be brought up and healed so that he can pour into you. Those are just practical examples of breach. Gossiping, spread videos, going into uh uh, ungodly concerts and doing things in the world, those are breaches in your spirit. It is perverseness. 
Because what's in you comes out. What you behold is what's in you, and what comes, what's in you comes out. You do, you doubt, you doubt, you put paying more attention to the things of the world. That's what's in you. So that's what comes out. Perverse things of the lips. He gives you the fruits of your thoughts. Nothing but what you put yourself around is what's coming out. Because that's all that's in. That's a breach. Now let's deal with the untempered murder. You know, you got that example. They're going to come to the prophets asking, why didn't this come to pass? Because all of it's going to fall to the ground because he's going to rain out his true word and judgment. Because the prophets are going to judge. The, the, the prophets are coming out. The Ichabod, they're going up in there. They're calling it all out. And it's going to fall. Just like Elijah did. How long are you going to hop between two positions, uh, the, the, the opinions? You're going to realize today whose God is God. That's what's about to start going down. Untempered mortar? Hmm. Let me see here. Against the pastors who feed. Let me go with this scripture here before I go to give you the practical example of undad martyrs. When you are a pastor or a teacher and you sit there with people in your church fornicating, no ministering on it. They having sex out of wedlock. You're not telling them why they got their issues. You're having sex out of wedlock. That's why you're cursed. Yeah, you're under a curse. He can't bless you. You walking around in the church with mini skirts and nips showing in the church. I done seen it. You just, they, if I can see your nipples, I know you saw them before you left the house. Nobody corrects it. Untempered martyr. They telling you you're okay. You blessed. Just sow the seed. You're blessed. Come as you are. You come as you are the first time. You should come like that the second time. People sitting up in the church having full of furs. Nobody address it. Going to the clubs. I people where elders are going to Beyonce concert. Nobody corrects it. Untempered mortal. You just preaching the word, giving them the word, but not the correction. You're holding the truth, withholding the truth in unrighteousness. That means you know, but you're not telling them. You're withholding the truth in unrighteousness. I'm gonna read Jeremiah 23, 1 through 4 real quick. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. That's how they get scattered. Because that's part of the judgment. But I gotta stay on course because that's a whole other message. Because part of the judgment is scattered sheep. Okay? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of the countries whither they have driven you have driven them, and will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. He's gonna correct us because he's gonna send pastors after his own heart. Okay? I'm gonna read uh Ezekiel 3 34 and 2. Son of my, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Pete, what I tell y'all, well, you said Israel, but what's, what's, what, what, what once was will be. And anyone who does the same thing will suffer the same consequences. Prophesy and say unto them, thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should they not feed the flocks. He ain't just talking about physical food. You taking in this word, you taking in all that he's given you, and you have understanding of it. You sitting on it and you fat with it, but you withhold that truth in unrighteousness and you tell them what they want to hear to keep the house packed. You are dabbing it with untempered mortar. The prophets that prophesy only blessing and a good year and a good thing, untempered mortar. He's going to rain down judgment on it. That's the untempered mortar. So not only there are there breaches in spirits, you're not correcting them. That's the breach. And that's the error that you are fed, but you are withholding the truth and unrighteousness. And then on top of that, they're dabbing it with untempered mortar. Words that are not from God. Words that only give them what they want to hear. Words that only comfort and make them comfortable in their sin. Because when they start calling it out, it's going to be a few empty churches. But the Lord going to fill them again. Because you got to call it out. You will be responsible. But not call it out what you clearly see. Who would not dress homosexuality? Who would not dress address perversion? And that's all forms of perversion. It ain't just homosexuality. It's fornication on any form. It's lying, it's cheating, it's stealing, it's gossiping, it's hatred, it's unforgiveness, it's rudeness, all of it. You sitting there with you people you got welcoming, so-called mothers of the church, and they rude and look at their people, and you don't you don't correct them. Untempered mortar. Make them comfortable in what they're doing. And they're on their way to damnation. Woe to the shepherds, holding the truth and unrighteousness. I'm going to read Ezekiel 34, 7 through 10. 
or at least uh, the first, and you can read the uh, the rest. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely, because my flock became prey, they become prey. What does the word of God tell you? That he seeks, the, the, the enemy roams about seeking who he, he can devour. And because none of their actions are being corrected, it's being dabbed over, told it's okay, it's okay. That's that untempered mortar. Oh, you're going to get a blessing this year. Just sow this seed. You're going to get a blessing this year. Just sow this seed. Untempered mortar. He's seeking to devour them. They are set for prey. And my flock became meat to every beast of the field. That means every beast that's out there. Every lying sign and wonder, every lying prophet, every lying teacher, they have become prey to the beast in the field. Because they were no shepherd. There was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for the flock. Then you don't even go pursue. You, you check up and you keep watch over them. Call out when you see stuff wrong. Call out when they ain't been in church in a minute. Where you been? I ain't seen you. What's going on? We need to talk. And address anything they do. Don't, don't make excuses for what they do. Somebody come to you and they in a relationship. Talk about why they fight all the time. And they shacking up. And, and they living in sin. That's your problem. I can stop you right there and tell you that's your problem right there. He can't bless a cursed situation. You've opened the door. And I continue the scripture. You have made them pray for every beast in the field. Because there was no shepherd. Neither did the shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves. And not my flock. So you continued in the word, getting word and feeding and studying on the word. But you have not fed my flocks. My the flock. This is the untempered mortar. So when not only do you not feed them, that means you're not feeding them the truth. And I put you, you feed them defiled meals. What's a defiled meal? Twisted. You only give them word to make them comfortable. You don't give them word to correct them and you leave them in their sin. So you call forth the prophet to prophesy a word over them if they sow a seed and you tell them they're going to have a blessed year even though they're still living in sin. They you're going to get better, but they're still on their way the other way, on their way to hell. Untempered mortar. Judgment is coming up on false prophets and false pastors. Get ready. Untempered mortar. This is the word I have. Uh... I'm not going to add to it. I don't need to add to it. I think he has made himself very clear. Woe unto the shepherds and the prophets who went when I did not send them, who have dabbed these breaches in these spirits, these walls, with untempered, untempered mortar. This is mortar that is not of the spirit. It is of man. It is not fortified because it's not fortified by the word of God. It is fortified by man's wisdom. Keep people in their sin. Keep people comfortable in what they're doing. Lie to them and tell them to sow a seed. Tell them they're blessed when they are living a cursed life by the doors they're open. They're living a cursed life by the life they have chosen to live and love this world. Live in and enjoy and love the things of this world. That they sit in church and full of furs comfortable. No conviction. Many are having affairs. Many are going home from the pulpits and from serving and from worshiping on stage, sleeping with men and women who they are not married to. Going home watching porn. Going home stealing. Getting in debt. Drinking themselves to a stupor. Smoking weed. And there is no conviction. Just was in the club before they got up in the pulpit that night. They have tainted that altar because the altar sanctifies the gift that's on the altar. And then you put these defiled things on the altar. Altars in the churches need to be restored to holiness. Y'all need to take this message before the Lord. Pastors and false prophets. A breach and this is to the body of Christ as well. Because judgment starts with the household of God. And the, the sheep are included. There are breaches in your spirit. There are breaches in your spirit. And they have been dabbed with untempered mortar. They're telling you things to make you comfortable. And it is up to you to work out your own fear with uh, your own salvation with fear and trembling. You have the word of God to study for yourself. The Holy Spirit convicts you and you have to choose to lay it down. The, the prophets and the pastors are going to be held accountable for their part, but it will, does not exude you from yours. Time of correction and self-examination. Examine yourself. What the scripture tell us? To see that you be in Christ. Get your houses in order. It's about to get rough. 
and it's going to be made manifest. Those who are sheep and those who are goats, those who are surrendered and those who are self-willed, those who are, are being brought through and those who are going through on their own, on their own, those who are false and those who are 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 uh, uh, true. Untempered mortar, a breach in your spirit. I gave you practical examples, and I know there's many of you that's going to be able to identify. This is the moment of truth. How long will you halt between two opinions? You either always with God or you always in the world. Because if you straddling the fence that is lukewarmness, he will spew you out of his mouth. And he will say, depart, I never knew you. Those are not words you want to hear. If you are living in fornication, you are living in shacking, you are living with masturbation, you are living having sex out of wedlock, you are gossiping, lying, stealing, and all things that are all forms of ungodliness. You got to lay it down. Come out of the world. Be ye separate that you will not be partakers of the judgment that's about to come. Because I'm telling y'all, war is coming. You got to prepare yourself for what you're about to see. Cry out to the Lord. It's needed. Uh, grace be with you. Take this message before the Lord. Pray for me as I pray for you guys. Uh, grace be with you and I love you all. Stay tuned for the messages that are to follow. Those of you who don't know the Lord, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Cry out to him in your house where you are. Don't be worried about what you're doing, what you've been doing, what you just did. Cry out. And understand that it's a process. Read the word of God. Give your heart to him today. I have a prayer of salvation on my channel. You can find it. Uh, easy to find because I put it in the prayer section. And listen to it over and over again. And ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. Because I'm telling y'all. it's some things coming. And many are going to go home. Many are going to leave this place. And I pray where you're going is in the bosom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Or to be absent from the body will be in hell. Because you will not die. Give your life to him today. Grace be with you and I love you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach. Be a voice, not an echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.